Thanks for tuning in to Raising Bosses. I'm your host, Shauna J. Ray. Here on this podcast, we discuss changing our mindsets, growing a business while raising a family. If that's what you're interested in or currently doing, please stay tuned for what we have ahead. All right, guys, thank you for joining me on Raising Bosses. Today I have Michelle Welch of Queen Cleaning Concepts. I have been following her for a very long time and she has inspired me for so many years. I just was so happy that I could have this interview with her today and pick her brain on her business that she is just growing exponentially and just doing big things overall. Okay, Michelle, thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. It's an it's a honor. I'm so, I'm so happy that you did this and reached out, and I'm happy we're able to connect now. So let's go. Yes. I'm ready, yes. ready. So um, I just want you to tell me a little bit, because I know a little bit, but if you want to throw something else in, a little bit extra for our, our listeners. Definitely. So my name is Michelle Welch, and I resonate with the term mom entrepreneur. Um, I'm a full time single mother, but I also run four businesses. Um, three of my businesses I have a cleaning company, I have a catering company, and I'm also a certified life and business coach. Um, and I also have a nonprofit uh, that is um, the foundation for that is so that I can help women that want to follow their dreams that are mothers. Even if you're not a mother, I want to help you. I want you to be able to live your best life while fulfilling all of the desires of your heart and what God puts for you. Um, The reason why I feel like I'm so transparent on my journey is because a lot of people have doubts. A lot of people struggle with the why and why should I do this? And if I do it, what are people going to think? And it's just like, for me, I didn't care what people thought. I knew I have two kids to feed and their thoughts are not going to pay my bills. So I try to instill some of the, the the knowledge and the nuggets and the gems that I've learned because I've been doing this. I've done over 12 startups for different companies. I've worked for corporations where, you know, I learned HR training, you know, I learned how to manage and things like that. So it was, for me, it was more or less like I have real world experience. You know, I'm only 26, but I've been through a lot. And I'm like, if I can get through these things and still be the woman that I am here, still be able to inspire somebody, then that's what I'm going to do. And that's just why I like, I, you know, from you following me on social media for the past couple of years, like, that's just all I know. All I know is to hustle. All I know is to just be present and be in the moment and be as transparent with people as possible. I'm not here for like the fluff and the, oh, you know, let's go on a yacht, let's pop bottles. No, I'm here with the, you know what, this week we're a little bit short on rent and we got to make it work. And, you know, as business owners, a lot of people think we have it all figured out. We don't, we just know how to manage things very well. So That's what I'm kind of here for, to give the good, the bad, the ugly. I'm a beauty and a beast. So that's what I like to say. Definitely. I definitely hear you on that one. And I've seen it. I've seen you. What about, you know, you have no thoughts about what everybody else has to say. That's like a big one for people. And I always like try to figure out ways to explain to people like what other people say or think. It doesn't matter. And everyone's always going to, everyone's always going to judge you no matter what you do. You're going to be judged, you know. Oh, you have a cleaning business? Oh, then you're whatever. So many times. They were like, you're a maid. You're, you clean toilets? Yeah, gladly. I will clean a toilet. Because you know what? At the end of the day, there's no job that is above anybody else's. None. I have, you know what? The money spends the same. Being in an executive office, being, you know, the owner of whatever big corporate, it all spends exactly the same. So that money that I get from coaching women or that money that I get from cleaning a toilet, it's it pays the bills. And for me, that's what I have to make. I don't actually have to make people understand anything. I, I don't speak anymore on defending myself of why I do what I do. It's more or less like you see the results. So what are you going to say? You can't say anything. So I now like, and a lot of people like, you got to move in silence. I don't move in silence. I just, I move in results. You're going to see, you know, I feel like a lot of times we put ourselves out there for people to see what we have going on and people like to take it and put their own perception on it. And that's the problem. And it's just like, you're not going to think the same way that I think. So if I'm putting something out there and I'm like, okay, is she not going to like it? And it's just like, at the end of the day, you're not even my target market. You know what I'm saying? So why do I care if you like it? Well, I love that. A lot of people need to just resonate with getting it out there. People are scared to put out content. And it's like, no one's going to know what you do. You won't even have people to be scared to buy your product because they don't even know what you offer because you're worried about what Joe Schmo says down the street. Like, get your content out there. When you get one likes, two likes, 
1500 likes likes don't pay your bills people like the clientele does and the clientele will only be there if you're showing them what you can offer them. And that's why I've been successful because I'm, I'm good at showing people what I can do. I'm like, don't let me tell you, let me just show you how it works. Like that's, that's how I so true. And I'm always sharing your stuff because it's amazing. Like the whole cleaning toilets thing. The thing is funny about that is everybody cleans toilets, but they do it for free. Meanwhile, yeah. you got, you know, your, your, your stuff's handled and you clean toilets. Okay. Yeah, like, that's it's what it is. Like, whether it's an employee of mine doing it, I've trained her to clean that toilet. Exactly. Hey, my touch is on everything. And I have so, like, the thing is, I have so much confidence in myself and what I offer to whatever brand that I do that I know that no matter what I touch, it turns to gold. Oh, it so sure I, does. My hands in, it's going to prosper because I'm going to work hard to make sure that it happens. And that's what sets me apart from a lot of people. So. I love that. Those are such gems. Those are such gems. Um, I know, I know a little bit about what you were doing before, uh, but can you tell for everybody else, like what you were doing before you set up cleaning, um, queen cleaning concepts? I don't want to say that wrong. <laughs> it's okay. So prior to um, uh, opening my own business, I had uh, two jobs that I remember because like my brain is like fried, but. I worked for Spectrum. I did business acquisition. So I was like the middleman person that made sure their their order went through. Like they had everything that they needed when the technician got there. Then like if they had like IP addresses that needed to be set up, like I'm kind of like a low key, like a real tech person. I'm really good on the computer. I know how to set up digital networks. I know how to set up like, like router. Like I know how to do all that crazy stuff. So I would be the person to make sure that their um, static IPs were set correctly, that their um, registers were running. Like I was literally dealing with like hotels, like enterprise level. Um, and that paid really, really well. But once again, you're stuck in that corporate mindset of this is my plateau. This is my ceiling. This is where I have to stay. And me, I can't do that. Like, no, every day I, I literally like, I wish you could see sometimes what my whiteboards look like. I have like 15 Reason. businesses and everyone's like Michelle. And I'm like, God did it. Okay. He put the vision in me. Don't be mad at me. Go talk to him about it. I just know I'm here to perform a duty. And as long as I do it, I'm good. And then prior to that job, I was a UPS HR supervisor. So I worked at the, or in Orlando, Florida at the Atlantic app location. And I worked from like three 30 in the morning to like one o'clock in the afternoon. And I hi would hire on like three to 400 people a week. So I was like doing interviews. I was doing all things HR. It was really, really good, but I was I was actually pregnant um, at the time of doing that job. So I was like, I worked there until I was about six months pregnant with Trey. Um, and I had a lot of complications. So I ended up having to leave. And then that's when I picked up back to Spectrum. So it was really difficult. I went through a really hard transition. And that's why ultimately after I had Trey and then I went back to Spectrum, I decided to like <clears throat> nix it. I was like, no, I can't do this because it was stressful. Trey was a preemie and I was like, this is not fair. Like I have to be here for my son. He needs me. This job does not care about me. I was in the freaking room breastfeeding, crying because I'm like, my boobs hurt. I want to be with my baby. Like, literally, my mom would text me and be like, the baby's crying. And I'm like, I know. I can feel it in my boobies. Like, baby, yeah, we been there. Yeah. So, you know, been there. every day it was like a struggle to get up. I was depressed. And then postpartum, you know, and then I was, I'm a single That's mom. So all by myself. And then I just was over it. I was like, you know, excuse my French. I was like, fuck this. I can't do this anymore. And I walked away. And my mom was like, you got this. And the reason why my mom was so confident in me got it, like having it together was because she raised me to be a hustler. My mom is like the prime example of what a heart, like I am my mother at my age. Like that's, that's what it is. Like she was a, like, she killed it. She killed it. Like, and that's why now she gets to just stay at home and just chill all day because she worked. Extremely. She pushed that right. Yeah. Oh, she it's, so, it's so amazing that you're so young and you held such high positions already. Like yeah. that, that floors me in itself. But like you said, you're a hustler. And like my, my mom, she also raised me to like always push for what I wanted. Anything that I ever wanted to do. She's like, what do you need? Exactly. And it's like so beautiful so that you were able to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And everybody doesn't have that. And it makes me sad, but it's like, you don't always need that either. It's just backup. Yeah. And that's the thing uh, as well, too, because um, now to touch on my life coaching a little bit, 
I'm a certified life and business coach, but I specialize in confidence and empowerment coaching because a lot of things that, uh, for me, a lot of things that people lack, because I do coach men as well, which is crazy, um, is they lack the confidence in themselves to know their own abilities. And it's just like, it's such a disservice to yourself when you don't even believe in the qualities that we're putting you for you to prosper. Like, it's so beyond me when someone just doesn't believe in themselves. And I'm like, you know, a lot of people say for me that I'm overly confident, I'm conceited. And I'm like, so you want me to walk around and act like I'm not the shit? Like, what? No. You know what? I am a mother. First of all, that trumps everything. I created lives. I carry babies. You know? Not only that, I'm a single mom. I do it by myself without a problem. I don't complain about it because you know what? God got me. Then I run businesses. Several. You know what I, mean? I am great. And if anyone wants to tell me I'm not, you just, you don't know me. You don't know me. And that's okay. And one thing I've learned and like for all the viewers, your life will be so much easier if you learn to stop taking things personal. Yes. You can take things personally. You don't know what people go through on a daily basis know what their life has been like you don't know any of that and for anyone to like you know take like if you had an attitude towards me I don't know what you went through that morning you could have gone to a car accident your kid could have threw up all over you we don't know but then I, I'm not gonna fight you with ignorance so a lot of things is, is you gotta learn how to just kind of flow through life if someone has an attitude tell them to have a blessed day that might that might make them feel better you know or dust it off your shoulder but don't sit there and feed negative energy with negative energy because oh, I love that. that. You can't do it that way. You know, I haven't gotten this far by being a bitch. No, I'm this far because I'm transparent and I'm honest and I'm authentic. That is the biggest thing for me. Building authentic relationships with people. Like I can tell someone's energy. I can tell their intention from the moment that I have a conversation with them. And that's a thing for me that I had to learn a lot of discernment because yep. I've come across a lot of catty people. I've come across a lot of fake people. But it's okay because it's like you got to take it as a learning experience for what you don't want for your future. And if you can like shift your perception. It's sad too because like um, I actually wanted to touch on two points that you mentioned. But the last thing you said that like you come across like catty people, sadly, because you're successful, because you're beautiful, because you're actually pushing to do what you want to do, you're going to come across so much more of those type of people. Whether you're like, you don't have to do, you literally walk into a room and girls are going to be like, Ugh. and you know I what I mean? Like, I love y'all. Like, exactly. And it's, <laughs> and I love how you didn't let it like push you. And then the second thing, it's so funny because my friends call me the motivational speaker for everybody. And I was like, um, a while back, I was listening to a podcast and the podcast was about becoming a motivational speaker, talking to people, coaching people. And I was like, oh, I got interested in it. Because I was like, I'm doing this for free and no one's listening and I'm not getting paid for it. Exactly. And then on top of the fact, it's like, like you said, no one. And I was actually that way. That was like one of the things that made me start the blog was because I felt alone. I was trying to grow. And then it's like in my growth, I noticed that like other people don't know like what they want. They don't know where they want to go. They don't know how to get there. They don't know how to try to get there. And, you know, it makes me sad, but it's funny because I was actually there once. I was actually, well, I actually still, sometimes I write blog posts and I'm like, no one's going to read this. But so write, write it anyway, because you're going to read it because you're going to, you're going to be able to go back and see your growth. You're going to be able to go back and see the adversity that you went through at that specific point in your life. It's that so, part. so put it out there. Like exactly. That's what I, you know, it's so funny. And um, I'm going to write probably another blog post about this. A lot of people go, oh, I want to get into YouTube because I have a YouTube channel and I've, you know, do that or whatever. And that's growing. And so I'm, everybody comes to me and goes, oh, Lashana, how do you do that? I don't have the personality. I don't have the this. I don't have the that. I said, first off, that makes no never mind because just because you feel like you're not interesting enough, the next person might feel differently. Mm -hmm. So I always bring up this uh, YouTube channel called Benjamin Bennett. It's called Sitting and Smiling. If you want to just Google that real quick on your phone real quick. And when people tell me I don't have the personality. I don't have the equipment. I don't have this. I just want you to glance at this particular channel. Everybody like that's listening, go ahead and glance at it. Benjamin Bennett, or you could type in sm sitting and smiling. He'll come up on either one. And it floors me every time. I've mentioned it before and I, everybody's jaw drops. Oh, he's just like sitting. 
for four hours. Wow. So when people people tell me, (laughs) like people tell me, oh, he's just, he's, you know, I don't have this. I don't have that. So I try to, to like show them, like, you don't always need that. Like, don't sit on those type of things. My my next question, I really have to know this. Like, I think we all want to know. How did you start? Because that's like another part of, you know, being a mompreneur that is like, how do you start these businesses? Where did you figure out how to start this? Um, Once again, that kind of goes back to my family. Um, I was raised in, in, with entrepreneurial blood in me. Like my mom and my dad, they like my dad, he worked for the city um, when we were in Jersey. because that's where I'm from. Father, he had like a regular job, um, so when I'm from New Jersey, so when we moved here when I was six, my dad and my mom had a cleaning company, ironically. And yeah, so, um, but they had it in Jersey. So my dad was traveling back and forth to Tampa to take care of that. And um, it was great. But obviously, you know, going from, it's not like you're going from Tampa to Orlando, it's Tampa to Jersey. So they stopped that. And then my mom decided to open up my aunt's daycare center. And then when my mom saw what my aunt, like how she opened that and how great it was, my mom then opened up her own daycare and then she opened up another one. So we, my whole family is just, we're bloodline. Like we don't know, like we know how to work for people, but we know how to make money. We're hustlers. So the whole, like, how did you start? My mom, like she made sure like when I, like when I was a baby, I was in her office in a crib. Like I was with her 24 seven. She didn't trust people. It was crazy for her. She was like, no, you're my baby. You stay with me, whatever. So I grew up in a daycare. I grew up tell, like I was like eight years old and she's like, you're going into the classroom firing teachers because you didn't like the way they treated a the child. So it was, I was born into this life of knowing like we got to get it by any means. And like, you know, I was very fortunate growing up. Thank God. Um, because my parents worked extremely hard. Like when I tell you my mom, like She would go to the daycare at four in the morning to open up, make sure everything was straight. And she wouldn't leave until four in the morning the next day. Like she didn't care. Her passion lied behind those kids. Her passion lied with her business. And she wanted to make sure that she every day put in 500%. She didn't care whether we were all there with her, if we weren't, if we were home. I remember there was days I didn't see my mom because she was putting in that work. But best believe my 16th birthday, my 15th birthday, I had a $30,000 car and an $80,000 quinceanera. Where did that come from? My mom and dad putting in the work. Like they wanted to give us the absolute best life and they did. So now I'm over here like, how am I going to outdo my childhood with my my kids? Because I had everything. I remember one day I was like, mom, I want to go to the beach. My mom booked us a trip to Puerto Rico within like an hour later. And that weekend, me and her went to the beach. Like those are the memories I have as a child. So imagine trying to be like, how do I do this with my kids? So I'm over here like, I got to work harder. Like, why are we not at a beach right now? Like, what are we doing? I'm doing it wrong. And, you know, she always has to stop me and say, you know, Michelle, you're doing amazing because she had my dad there. You know, I'm a single mom doing this. She had her husband, you know, they've been together for 30 something years. So, and it is very difficult, but, you know, having them there and encouraging me and then, you know, like I'm saying, instilling that stuff in your children at a young age, showing them the hustle, the love, the respect, all that very young. Our kids are a product of what we are. Uh, at the end of the day. So if you are raising ignorant children, it's because you got to look at the parents. It's, kids are born like a white, like a whiteboard. They learn from what you show them. They only adapt. Children are not born with opinions. They're not born knowing yes or no, right from wrong. It's the things that we do daily that show them. My seven-year-old son, well, soon to be seven-year-old, he, he had like a, what do you want to be for work day at school or something? He went to school. At, he wanted to be me. He said, I want to be my mom. That for me... I was like, Landon, a hundred moms, I think I, you win. I think I you saw win. that post. I think you posted about that. That's so yes. cute. And it's just like to know how hard that I work and to know that a child can understand that and see that and be like, you know what? That's what I want to be like. He could be like anybody he wants. He chooses to want to be like me. And that's when I know like in this, in this moment, I'm raising revolutionary children. Like I, I tell some of my girlfriends all the time, like if my son is to ever date your daughter, you are lucky. Your daughter's lucky. They are being Can I just say you're raising kings. kings. I see it. I see you raising kings. And as a woman with girl children, 
I love to see women raising kings that are actually going to be something when they grow up. Actually, exactly. women are right. They're going to know. And as a first off, you're young and you're a young, you're a young single mom. And like, it always amazed me because I was a young mom, but I was a young mom with somebody and it was hard. And then you have that second person to like battle, you know? And yeah, so, so when you. I see single moms, I'm just like thrown. My mom was a single mom. And I don't know, I think back and I'm like, how did she do it? Like, even with my grandparents' house, how did she do it? And it's like, to see someone, I'm, I'm, I am older, but like to see someone younger than me, like doing so much, it just, it, that's what I think always inspired me. Because I think um, my daughter, it was about three years, and my daughter was a newborn when I first saw you at the, uh, the, the <laughs> women's event, the I Am Brave event. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So be, okay, so that was back in 2015. So it's been a long time coming. It's, yes, a year, literally like three years now. She's about to be four. So, and I remember she was like six months old at the time. And I, I got to come and I didn't think I was even going to make it. And I got to see you there and you, you know, you were very, um, you were very, you're very well spoken and very like mature. And you must, you must have been like 22, 23. I was 20. Yeah, I was 20. I'm 26. I'll be 26. I was 23 years old. Like you are. I love seeing I'm an old soul. So I love seeing women that are actually about something. And like, you know, what I mean, like I'm looking up to yeah. you. And I'm, uh, I'm older than you. I'm looking up to you. I love that. I don't mind that at all. Um, what I mean, I think we've talked about this a little bit. But like, what other challenges have you found with between work and family? Because I know scheduling is crazy for me. Oh, yeah. Um, for me, scheduling isn't really my problem um, because I'm a, I don't really find balance. I always call it a family work integration um, for the simple fact that I am a single mom. I'm like, I would consider myself like a stay at home mom. Um, a lot of the time, you know, like right now, my, I had to get my, grab my son, but he's here and it's just like I have to make it work, you know. I don't always have like my nannies available. I don't always have my mom available. I always don't want to pay for daycare. It's, it's expensive. It's $200 a week. Like that's crazy. So it's just like, we got to make it work sometimes. And, you know, I find the balance, I'll, I'll use the word balance, but I'll find the balance um, in it where, you know, like if I know that the baby's with me, you know, I'll, I won't schedule my meeting until two o'clock. Cause I know he goes down for nap at one and he's, sleeps until about three. So I try to work it around. A lot of my clients, everybody really understands because I'm so transparent with my journey. Everybody understands that I have kids. Everybody knows that I'm a single mom. So people typically are like very, like they're very understanding because I'm very open with them. I'm like, you know what? I can't do this, but I can do that. So I give people options to accommodate my schedule. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, love I would never want, I would never want to put someone in a position where they feel like they're compromising their own business to accommodate me. So I'm going to accommodate myself first, and then I'm going to allow you to, 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 uh, to move accordingly, if you will. Um, so I, it's all about work family integration. My kids are a part of everything that I do. Um, and you know, sometimes like if I need to run to a house real quick to do a walkthrough, I'll bring one of my kids with me, or if I need to run and do this, they'll be right there. Why? Because you know what? They're a part of this. This is going to be their legacy. I'm building it for them. And like Landon, he already understands like what cleaning is. He knows like if I, if he already knows when mommy wakes up and that music gets on and we got to start cleaning the house and things, he goes and grabs his little, his little uh, microfiber rag and his little antibacterial I start people. wiping his room down. I just, I don't play. Yeah, exactly. Island people on Saturday they morning. Already know. <laughs> they already know. I'm blasting that batata and we up in here singing and dancing and cleaning and whatever. But, you know, and then it's like the common misconception. People think that, like, we have it all together. 99% of the time, my house is a mess because I'm so busy worrying about everyone else's houses and their businesses. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's just like I'm fulfilled, messy house or not, laundry everywhere or not, because my businesses are good. My kids are happy. And we will sit on our laundry piles and play together. I don't care. Like, you have to understand life is... Everything is, is such in the moment. You know, a lot of times we take for granted the time that we have here. And it wasn't until recently that I realized, like, how limited we are, you know. And I never want to have a day passing where I feel like I didn't do something that was towards my purpose or that I didn't do something that is going to better my kids for the moment that I'm here. And I work as hard as I do now because when that time does come that I leave, I don't want my kids to be like, well, what did she leave me? Like, what am I supposed to do? I don't want them to be lost because all they have is me. So it's like a whole, it's like a whole different 
feeling of wanting success. It's not success for the accolades or, you know, to, to be able to say, hey, I was on this podcast. Not, no, it's a success for my kids to be okay when I'm not here. And that's what I prepare for. And everyone's like, why are you thinking like that? Because we are, we're not here. Like, this is not forever. This is not my forever. I know my time will expire. But I need everyone to understand that everything that was put in me will be used to its full capacity. Whether I'm running 15 businesses at one time or whether I'm out here just on the side of the road with people just fighting for someone's rights. It doesn't matter. It's like you have to use what was put in you. And that's why I move the way I do. I don't care what people say. I don't care if they think I got too much going on. It's not for them to understand. This is my dream. This is my vision. This is what God put in me. You know, why don't you go focus on what he put in you so you can stop worrying about what he put in me? Oh, I like that. Oh, that was like so much shade. I mean, that that kind of covers your why. So, I mean, I don't have to ask you that because you've covered the why. Oh, them so babies. Times. You see Landon and Trevor, that's my why. Yes, like, and they are well like taken. Period. Oh, yes. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, what was it? Oh, I like to ask people because I'm, I'm a big book person. Um, like what type of books do you like? What type of things inspire you or help you keep uh, motivated in the media like that? Okay. So I'm a very big person. I do read a lot. Um, and I'm also a very big person on podcasts. I listen to podcasts daily and I'm also a very big person with God. Now I feel like- Share your favorite podcast as well, please. Yes. Um, there is a, a difference between being spiritual and being religious, I feel like. And I just, I'm very spiritual. So I do listen to like my church podcast. I go to Live Church. So they have their podcast and I listen to that whenever I'm feeling uh, or I need some encouragement because I feel like Pastor Ty really speaks to our generation. He lets us understand the, the Bible and things like that. So that's, that's what that, but there's a podcast called The Workaholic. And she's so transparent about her journey. I'm pulling it up on my phone so I can tell you what I'm, it is. I'm about to follow myself because I love <laughs> I podcasts. I love podcasts. Because I just, there is, let's see. Gary, Gary V. I do of listen course. to his podcast, The Audio Experience. Oh my God, everyone knows I love it. <laughs> that's, that's my man right there, 50 Grand. Um, let's see. I've had to like delete this podcast because it keeps, like sometimes it keeps coming, it comes up all, like on my phone randomly and it scares me like in the middle of the night. <laughs> it's just crazy like my life is just sometimes like a mess um but it's it's called the workaholic podcast if you type in workaholic it'll come up because it's the only one I that's like it. it um hold on i'm trying to find it on my other i have like three phones I'm like, I phone like okay a workaholic, Confe- but... it's Confe- yeah it's confessions of a workaholic and it's hosted by coriel um and she just dropped an episode and um energy to their oh, dreams. Hold on. Here it is. confessions of a workaholic Oh, cute. Okay, maybe I, let me see. I'm I'm still trying to find it right now. And, oh, because it's W E R K. Oh, work <laughs> like work. Like work, girl, work. Yeah, and um, yeah, she's so she's very transparent about her journey. Right now, I'm listening to an episode called "The Purpose of Principles," and I feel like with her podcast, she's a business owner as well. Um, so she feeds she feeds my soul when it comes to certain things in business that I can't always articulate. Um, so it's always good to have, to have those podcasts, but I'm a big person about trying, um, just trying different podcasts. Like I also listen to Amanda Seals, um, doses in small doses. So, uh, she's a comedian, but she's also very pro black and like pro, like being woke and stuff like that. So there's just like little things I grab, like little tidbits from here and there. Um, but, uh, and then, like I said, once again, live is a really big one. because My spiritual journey means so much to me, like being close to God. I really feel like at this point in my life, I would not have gotten where I'm at if I, if it wasn't for his grace and favor. Like, and you know, some people may look at you like you're crazy, but I'm like, I thank God through everything that I go through because it's a lesson that I needed to learn or exactly. it's something that I needed in me to be able to pour out into somebody else. Because honestly, I feel like my purpose here is to help women, you know, because I feel like being 26 and have gone through domestic violence and gone through horrible relationships and gone through like just the shitty end of everything. Like, why did I have to go through that so young? But I feel like I went through it so that I can tell my story so that the next person doesn't have to. Like, why do, like, the same thing with our children. It's like, why do, we don't want our children to struggle. I'm going through everything I'm going through right now so I can take it off my back so that they don't have to go through those things. And I feel like as parents, some of, some of the times we lack that care that the things that we do and go through, we don't want our kids to go through, but we don't break those cycles. We don't break those generational curses. We don't stop the issues when they start and then we pass them on to our kids. 
So it's just like being lazy. If your kid sees you laid out on the couch every day, not doing anything with your life, do you really think your kid may um, grow up to be something? You know, there's a small percentage that they will, but there's a larger percentage that they're going to do the same thing that you do. So it's very, very important that you're living the life that you want your children to live. If you're a parent, Ms. Beale, do you, do you have another, I think you had another question. Um, no, I think I was just gonna, you were saying you like the podcast. I wanted you to talk like, I like to get that information for that exact reason. Like I like to listen to podcasts. I like to watch. I like to watch a lot of, um, read books, listen to audiobooks and things like that. Oh yeah. There's a book. Um, there's a book I'll give you for, remember I spoke a little bit about not taking things personally. Yes, please. Um, before it's, it's a really good book. Hold on. Let me find it. Okay, You Are a Badass is a book that I read. Read those, yes. I love that book. Yes, um, I wish I had that at like 16. Girl, I wish I had half these books like <laughs> years ago because I feel like my life wouldn't be anything of what it is now um, if if it, if that was right. Me. Exactly, I agree completely. Like, I agree completely. When I read You Are a Badass, I read both the green one and the yellow one. I need the blue one next. And There's also a book called um, Don't Take It Personally, The Art of Dealing with Rejection. So for people that are in business, um, that's a good book for the simple fact that when you go through those times where you don't have clients, you don't have things going on or things are not going the way that you think they should, that book will kind of help you bring yourself back to your center so that you know, like, hey, like these things happen in business. Business is always not going to be booming. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. things will not always be amazing and you have to just kind of go with it in that sense. I love that. Yeah, I'm going to have to grab that book, too. So I just wanted to, like I said, I just wanted to wrap it up now. I I answered all my questions. I'm, like, so grateful I even had this time to talk one-on-one with you like this. I love love seeing you on social media. And I was just blessed to even be able to to capture, you know, half an hour, 40 minutes with you. Um, I want you to just, like, let me know, like, your socials and everything for everybody so they know where to follow you and see your businesses. So you can follow me on I am Michelle Welch uh, on Instagram. And from there, you can see like my mom entrepreneur page. You can see the queen cleaning concepts. Everything is on that one page. So if you find me at I am Michelle Welch, then you will find everything else about me. Um, Cause this is so many different businesses to constantly talk about. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my main page. And then if you want to find me on Facebook, Michelle Welch as well, but I'm so open to questions. And if you're a mom or if you're a woman, join my network, the mom entrepreneur network. I have so much in store for you guys. You have no idea how much work I'm putting in behind the scenes to bring the women of Orlando and hopefully around the world. So much resources. I have so many different things. I have a ribbon cutting coming soon. Like I'm so excited and I can't wait like for you guys to see, like I have a huge project I'm working on right now. I'm just going to throw a hint. It's called a, it's a co-working space that I'm working on. I can't wait. Like, you guys have no idea. I'm about to gut punch that ass and, like, really make my mark for the women here so that you guys have the resources you need to be successful. Wow. So, be okay. Oh, wow. Thank you. You always have, like, the best stuff coming out. Like, I have to just say that everybody told me that I need to, like, kind of, like, slow down because I have too much going on, which sure I kind of do. But I love how you ha- you're like, I have this, this, and this, and you're just killing all of it. You got, cause it's like, it's like, how bad do you want it? How bad do you, like, that's what I have to, when I feel overwhelmed or I feel like I'm just taking on too much, I literally will look at myself and be like, okay, well you asked for this. Do you really want it? And that's in those moments. I'm like, damn, Michelle, shit. Okay. I get it. Like, calm down. Like, okay, we got this, but you know, everyone goes through it and you just really, once you know self, once you're, you're like firm and what you believe in for yourself and what you want for your future, like knowing your why, and how to get there, all the other adversities and the negative thoughts and the blah, 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 it won't matter because you're going to, you're going to end up just killing it. You're like, you're going to just, you're going to every day, wake up, hustle, hustle it out, do what you got to do to get to the ultimate goal. And for me, the ultimate goal isn't being rich, like with money. The ultimate goal is being able for women to follow their dreams, to say, you know what, Michelle, because of your assistance, I was able to open my business or I was able to excel in my corporate career. Those are, that, that's what is for me, that's being rich. So, you know, my definition of, of life is a lot different from other people's and that's why I'm successful. Heck yeah. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your extent, your outreach. I love it. And thank you so much for your continued support for the, four, for, for the last four years. Like you're amazing. And we definitely need to do lunch and sit down because. Oh, I would love that. 
we can pour some more into you. So. Oh, I would love that. I actually, I do want to schedule something like that with you coming up recently. I I'm coming from Melbourne. So like next month, yeah, we that, that, that would be great. Know, I'll you on the schedule and we'll sit down, we'll have lunch, whatever you want. And we can just talk it out. Beautiful. Thank you so much again, Michelle. I know you have You're to get so back welcome. to the babies too. Yeah. So thank you again. And you just have a wonderful day. I'm going to be blasting this. Yes, I can't wait. Let me know when I can share it because I'm ready. My I'm sending the link when I finish editing everything. All right, my love. Well, good luck. You have a wonderful day and thank you so much for having me. You as well. Bye-bye. Hey. Thank you for listening to the Raising Bosses podcast. I hope you enjoyed and please tell your friends and family, go ahead and share this podcast on social media. If you or someone you know would like to be a part of this podcast, please email us at raisingbosses at gmail.com or you could DM us on all our social medias, our Raising Bosses on Facebook and Instagram. Thank you and goodbye.